Hello everyone, this is Kenneth Bruni and welcome back. So this is going to be the chapter 4 of our lab tutorial for SNG 207 Programming for Engineers. So in this video, we are going to look at the input function. And over the past videos, we've looked at the print function and you've seen me do this a number of times. So in here, I can type in print and into bracket Kwame. And now when I run this, we see Kwame being printed out over here. And that's simply because that is the instructions we've given the computer. Now, we also went on to, for instance, have a variable name. And inside of name, we'll pass in the value, for instance, Kwame Nkrumah. And now we can print out name over here. And clearly, we see Kwame Nkrumah being printed out in the terminal. Now, what we have over here is kind of a little bit static in the sense that anytime we want to change the name, we we'll now have to come inside of our code and come and effect that change. And that may not be a very good thing. Now, what if we want to give the user the opportunity to input values of their own so that our program will be a little bit dynamic? And in order to do that, let me clear this. We are going to use this terminal. So this terminal is going to be like the interface of which you are going to input the value and that value will be stored in the variable and for which reason we are going to have whatever thing we want to do. So in order to do that, we are going to use the input function. So I'll type in here input and because of IntelliSense, the moment I start typing input, it gives me the option to have input over here. So I'll press enter. And in here, you can see that there's a prompt over here and it says it needs an object. Now, at the end of the day, this is going to return a strange. You can see that we have str over here and look at the arrow. So the arrow is trying to tell us that whatever thing we type in here will at the end of the day return a strange. And there's some notes over here you can read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say enter your name. And I'll give a colon over here and I'll leave a space. Good. So now this is what is going to happen. If I run this program, we are going to see enter your name being displayed over here. And whenever we enter our name or we enter any name, it's going to be printed out because on line three, whichever name we enter will be saved in the variable name and it will be printed upon execution. So now let me run this program. And here you have the prompt, enter your name. So, of course, I'm going to enter my name, Kenneth Bruni. And whenever I press enter, you can see that I have Kenneth Bruni printed out over here because that's the logic we are trying to implement on line three. Now, let's do a little more and let's try and do this. So, I'm going to bring in another strange and I'll put in a comma over here. And I'll say, you entered... And I'll leave a space over here. So once again, let me clear this terminal so that we have a clean slate. And let's run it again. So I run this. And this time around, I'll say Kwame Nkrumah. And when I press enter, it reads, you entered Kwame Nkrumah. So it's looking good over here. Now there's one other thing I would want to show you as far as we're trying to interact with our system is concerned. And this is very important because moving forward, we are going to see the usefulness of what we have over here. And this is going to be the fundamentals of we getting input from the user so that we don't have to come inside of our code to come and type. Now, let me just comment these ones out. And at the very top, um, we are going to use another technique over here. Remember what we did when we were looking at variables and I've opened variables.py where we did some imports over here. So I wrote a code like from keyword import kw list, which I said, this is a keyword list. And we printed this out. So this gave us all the keywords in Python for which reason we cannot use them as our variable names. Now, there were some few questions that came up along the line. And I said, we are going to work extensively on these imports when we get to um, what I believe in chapter 22, where we have modules. So now look over here. When I uncomment this, let me uncomment this. And if I hover around this, you could see that 
it gives me the lookup and you see the word module over here and it tells you that this is a keyword so clearly a lot of the things we have in python is quite descriptive and there are some things in here that we can use and that's why we imported it so i'm saying that from this module and the module is basically in order for you to have um, at least some layman understanding when we get to modules of pi in um chapter 20 we are going to get a little bit technical but in order to have some layman understanding the module is like some piece of code that is written but it is a little bit hidden so in order to use it we need to import it so that we can use it good now we are going to do a similar import over here let's assume we want to write a code and in that code we expect the user to type in a username and a password so let's say this username is okay so enter your name and we print the name and now let me give you another instance where we are going to enter the password so i'll say password is equal to now if we do input and i bring in here enter your password and do it this way and for instance i want to also print the password so this time around i'll just print password this way and remember this password is a value we are storing over here so now i'll save this and once again let me just clear this now when i run this we get enter your name because that's the first piece of logic we are trying to implement over here so my name is kenneth i'll press enter and we get to line four line four says password which clearly um, we are trying to enter our password over here so now let's assume my password is one two three four that's a very bad password but for the purposes of this let's just assume my password is one two three four now in most systems whenever you type a password you are not supposed to see the password at least you, you you are expecting to see maybe some kind of a hash 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 to represent every character you type or sometimes you don't see anything at all now this may be a very bad design imagine you are designing a system for atms and whenever the person or a user types his or a pin it gets displayed in plain text as you see over here then there's a little bit of a problem so we are going to use a different type of input function to actually help us work our way through but then when i run this you could see that the line five you entered your name is displayed over here and the password is also displayed over here so now instead of using input over here we can use another thing so i'm going to say from get pass i want to import get pass so this get pass is almost like what we did when we are saying from from keyword import keyword list remember i said these are modules so for instance when you hover around this it tells you that this is a module these are inbuilt code that we can use but then they are hidden a little bit so in order for us to use it we need to import it good so from get pass i want to import get pass this get pass and you can see that when i hover around this second get pass it tells me that this second get pass is a function the first one when i hover around it it tells me this is a module and inside of the module there's a function and the function is basically some block of code that has been written so now this is how we use the get pass and instead of getting the input i'm going to say get pass over here and let me just bring in a space in order to make this a little bit readable so over here we've done this import in order to use the get pass and we are going to see exactly what this get pass does for us but on line four nothing has changed we are accepting an input which we are going to store in a variable name and on line five some things have changed over here we are now using the get pass to accept inputs into our password variable and at the end of the day we are going to print the value we saved in name and also print the password so now let me just um yes once again let me just clear this and now when i run this of course enter your name so i can enter kenneth once again i'll press enter and now it says enter your password now i am typing my password but it is not showing it is not showing because of this get pass function that i'm trying to use over here so when we read 
some of the things we have over. I see prompt for a password with echo turn off. So the echo is more or less like the display. So the display is turned off. And we can have in some arguments and some few other things which may not make sense now, but then later on we are going to understand some of these things. So now you could clearly see that nothing shows, but then I've typed in a password. So now when I press enter, you could see that you entered Kenneth. That's what is being printed out on line six for that's my name. And the password that I entered that didn't show was actually one, two, three, four. Let me run this code again. And this time around, I'm going to enter Bruni for my name. And the password, I'm going to enter something like 0000, so four zeros. And now when I press enter, I see you entered Bruni and the password is showing over here. Under normal circumstance, you'll not be showing this password, but maybe in the code, you'll be doing something with the password. But the most important thing is it doesn't display over here. So clearly you can see that the echo is turned off. The echo is one technical term used in other programming languages like let's say PHP. PHP is another programming language basically for web development. And um, if you are quite familiar with PHP, then echo is something. But then I think the word echo kind of makes sense. So echo like sound or show something like that maybe in physics or anything so what echo or what it actually does it, it turns the echo off so it doesn't show anything so it says with echo turn off so it doesn't show and that's exactly what we see over here so we can use the input function over here to accept input and save it in a variable and we can use the get pass if you want to turn echo off so you should know the difference between using input and using get pass. But in order to use get pass, we need to import it from get pass over here. All right. So this is going to be the end of this video, very short. But then this is what is going to lead us to write very interesting console applications. And if your guess is as good as mine, you could see that gradually we are building upon the knowledge. So later on, we'll be writing code where the user will be inputting values over here will be saved in some variables and some computations will be done along the line. Thank you very much. And please watch these videos, practice with your own examples, use different things. You can um, set a new variable for your age and you can print very interesting things. Now, the most important thing is you practicing with your own examples. So whenever you finish with the examples I showed over here, do it with your own examples. You can add in your phone number, your other things and everything is going to come along. Thank you very much and catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.